it's Helen Gordon here and I'm back again for a block number three of our flower power quilt along. Today's block is the daffodil, a very simplified version of the daffodil. It's got some nice movement through there. The trumpet of the daffodil is facing up, which is a very happy and positive kind of direction. And again, you've got that split background, which could be pieced or painted, uh, however you want to do this piece. But um, as always, I have traced it onto my um, selected batik fabric with the Sharpie and then I've stitched into the um, black outlines and now I can fill in the design. And this is really, you know, curly and organic. So let's um, have a high contrast here with a very straight design. I'm going to do straight lines, but they're going to slightly uh, turn with the movement of that leaf. So these parallel lines are going and touching the black Sharpie marker each time. And you can see that it's gradually turning with the shape of that leaf trying to keep them a consistent width apart right down to the end there. Now I've grabbed my panda pencil to make a division up the middle of this leaf and I'm going with an elongated S shape to create a very simplified feather but it ends up looking like the veins of a leaf right up to the top and then coming down the other side. Now you might like to put some diagonal lines in there just to remind yourself to keep that angle all the way down the spine of this simplified feather. So while I'm just busy stippling here, I just want to say to everyone that so far I am so pleased with all the variations I'm seeing. Uh, so far for block one and two, it's been pretty exciting. Uh, everyone is taking my designs way further than I ever planned or hoped. So it's lovely to see. So keep it coming. I love seeing the variations. Um, let's see what you can do with this daffodil block. And if you're going to share your block on um, Facebook, use the hashtag of FlowerPowerQAL. So you've got Flower Power as all one word and then capital Q, capital A, capital L for, for Quilt Along. So now on the daffodil, I've given the petals a fairly simple treatment of an echo. Um, I've come up onto the trumpet of the daffodil. Little jump stitch there as I got into the centre to emphasise those little um, stamens. Jump back across and then I decided to do um, sort of a cross hatch on the trumpet just to make it stand out more. But you can see how that is a curved line to emphasise the roundness of that trumpet. bit more echoing now for this background section I want to teach you something that I call jigsaw puzzles so you're going to need a marker that's really going to show up sometimes our panda pencil doesn't show up on the lighter colors so I'm going to use my friction pen and hopefully not block the camera too much but I'm going to come in here with about half an inch wide grid okay doesn't have to be perfect you know me I don't like perfect wonky is always more interesting okay so I'm just doing it freehand and I'm going to come across here with the horizontals 
So hopefully you can see I'm marking an entire grid that's all about half an inch square. Don't forget that little bit in there. And oh, there's a tiny bit in there maybe. Okay, now I couldn't do this design without having pre-marked this grid. Okay, I'm now going to create a jigsaw puzzle design. So I'm going to start here on this top row and head on down in all the verticals first. And as I come down, in between each intersection, I'm going to put the knob of a jigsaw puzzle. And it doesn't matter if it's left or right. We just want to get that um, jigsaw puzzle patterning happening. And you can see how I keep using that black ditch to travel, okay? You can get in there as many times as you like to travel somewhere. So right now I'm going to travel up to this area here that we haven't done yet. And that's the beauty of this grid design. Uh, it's quite easy to continue the design in those gaps, um, whereas sometimes some patterns are really hard to get that feeling of it continuing when you've got other shapes interrupting it. No knobs on that one, that's okay, it still continues that pattern. And as you can see, I'll always rather travel than cut my thread. Now when that friction pen's ironed away, you're left with a pretty cool jigsaw puzzle there. And every single piece fits into the next piece and no pieces are missing. That's true. You might notice I also, I never put the knob obviously on the edge because more than likely the edge of a puzzle is that straight border. So that's a lot of fun. That's a good one to practice. You can also do that on a um, wonky grid, on a varied grid. It works equally as well. So now I've just got this one section left and I'm planning on keeping this area unstitched. So if this is heavy and stitched, then that'll sort of stand out as a high contrast. And on mine, just by chance, it's fairly light there and I'm, I quite like that. So here I've decided to go with a bit of an echo, which solves the wobbly area there quite well, but it, it gives it vibration from the trumpet. So a simple echo that just keeps following around, it gradually smooths out the wider that you get with the echo, using that ditch to travel and just finding that path. There we go. So I ended up with an echo, which I like the way it gives that a bit of vibration. You can almost hear it um, trumpeting. And then that's just an easy solution for in and behind those long leaves there. There you go. So that's our block. I'm just going to sign it and then we're done. So thanks for joining me for today's block. Come back again in two days time for the next installment for our Flower Power Quilt Along. Education inspiration from HelenGodden.com.